So sometimes you can think about when is the right time to start platelets transfusion and what are the levels. So basically go with the, when you have uh, platelets low 10,000 level, then like so certain criteria we have to follow. So less than 10,000 level and patient, we have to prophylaxis when patient is ha having bleeding. Bleeding with less than 10,000 platelets level. There is one of the prophylaxis you start doing it. Now less than 20,000 with the conditions like DIC. Good Dr. Mara, do you want to add something? DIC? Absolutely. You can add DIC with the, that, you can add sepsis. Yes. Um, and then with those two, I guess you can, you know, say fever um, or active bleeding. Yeah. Fever. So basically coagulopathy, which includes the sepsis and the DIC, and then fever or active bleeding. This is high gear point, very nice. Yeah. With the DIC, go with this level and transfuse the platelets. Now, if we talk about other than that, I will just go with the 50,000 level too. But before that, I will talk about ITP. So what are the things we need to remember ITP? Uh, what are the levels? A little bit slightly different, less than 10,000. You have to give. And less than 30,000 with active bleeding. Active bleeding. So as we know for the kids, you have to do observation and if it is active bleeding, corticosteroid. But here is like at the time when we give platelets, ITP is this criteria. Now if you talk about less than 50,000 level, less than 50,000, this is always in the case of major surgery, major surgery, acute mm -hmm. blood loss. Yeah. Blood loss. Anything else you want to add, Dr. Hanna? Uh, per, uh, basically, exactly what you said. They put it as major surgery, major blood loss, or acute hemorrhage. So it's all, I think, acute yeah. blood loss basically covers hemorrhage, and I don't know why they wrote it separately. Exactly. Yeah. And less than 100,000 is when you have a CNS symptoms. Right. Anything involving the CNS or the eyes? Eyes. Yeah. Bleeding is from the eyes, CNS, hemorrhage. So. As we know that uh, we have a hemorrhagic stroke. So this is the level. Now, what are the contraindications? What are the conditions where we cannot able to, we cannot give a con uh, platelets? So uh, there you go. Our friends, TTP. Thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. We have a health syndrome. Yeah. Which is often associated with preeclampsia. Yes. Eclampsia. No. Then we have HIT. Yes. Heparin induced thrombocytopenia. And we sometimes also we can add, a, add post post transfusion purpura purpura yeah post transfusion purpura okay so we'll, we'll see why we, got, we cannot give uh, platelets in ttb because ttb is like condition where too much you know and adams uh, you know that thing the mutation is happening so more platelets are consumed and no matter it's not going to help we have to have a cause we have to treat the cause and in the health syndrome also we have to deliver deliver and uh, just that's the management here delivery because it's happening in the pregnant lady but delivery is the answer but here here is treat the cause with the corticosteroid treatment and now hit stop heparin all products and switch to Algatroban. Algatroban. Post transfusion purpura. We have right now no no idea about this. So these are all the conditions where okay. So what are the levels? Go with this levels. Less than ten thousand with bleeding prophylaxis. Less than twenty thousand 
DIC sepsis. If you just remember this, you are good to go for the exam. Less than 50,000 with major surgery, less than 100 is CNS with eyes, CNS or eyes, the bleeding from CN, uh, hemorrhage and bleeding from eyes. Contraindication, what, what's the time where we cannot give platelets? PTP, health syndrome, hit, post transfusion, torpura. There must be more contraindication there. And make sure you pay attention in the question. Now, ITP, this is the level we, we should follow. Excellent. And one last point is that uh, when, when in the normal range, when can we give platelets? We can consider it in uh, patients with platelet dysfunction or on antiplatelet drugs or agents that have active hemorrhage. In those ones, you can give them a platelet transfusion in the normal range. Um, other than that, you follow these levels here. And the goal of platelet transfusion is what? It's to decrease the risk of bleeding. Yes. So about one unit of platelet should increase the platelets by approximately 50,000. Just good to know. Great. So just let me know. I will write the few highlighted points. Sure, absolutely. So Dr. Honda, can you repeat that again? You got it. Okay. So patients with platelet dysfunction okay those patients who has platelet platelet dysfunction or on antiplatelet agents so most likely patients who have chronic kidney disease yeah. chronic liver disease brilliant so platelet dysfunction and what or on antiplatelet agents okay like aspirin clopidogrel sure platelet agents agents and with these two, either of these plus active hemorrhage. Okay, either of these two plus active hemorrhage. Need platelet transfusion within the normal range. Okay, got it. Platelet transfusion. Transfusion. Within the normal range within the normal range and within the normal okay. so extremely high risk patients like you said ckd chronic liver disease patients with active hemorrhage or if you're on aspirin and clopidogrel and you have active hemorrhage that you can disregard the platelet level let's give them platelets all uh, right disregard the levels right wonderful that's a high yield point you added here thank you so much dr harna you got it buddy we love you we love you too man and i love all of you students yeah. uh, please comment anything we mess up here you guys can add in the comments anything you like help, help yeah. each other because we are still medical students and we are trying our best to give you more good knowledge if you think we're good looking if you like our personality write that too if you want us to uh, take us out for dinner, we are ready. That's it. No. And now Dr. Danny is going to finish with his classic dance moves. <laughs>